What's up, Steve? Nothing, Chris. More like what's on. It's that time of the year where the Northern Hemisphere starts coming to life and there's a ton of festivals, demo days and races to get to. Sounds to me like a hit list of events to get out to this summer on the e-bike. What exactly is going on this year then, Steve? This summer, e-bike wise? E-bike wise this summer, yeah, I'll probably go out in the hills by myself for a bit of peace and quiet. Right. But I guess there are events and there's festivals. Yeah. And I think, um, and that's the cool thing about festivals is that it's a mix of the social and the physical. And it's generally quite cool places to go to. For example, only in a few days time, or actually right now, I'm gonna be at the Sea Otter Classic in Monterey, California. It's a mix of a trade events and some races. Mm -hmm. But America's got loads of events going on and festivals. You've got the Out of Buy, you've got the Sedona Festival. Yeah, cool places to go to. What about over in the UK? I think. There's something going on in Scotland very soon, right? Yeah, the Tweed Left Festival is going on and an event actually has been held there as a Bosch EMTB series. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like a really cool event. They've got stage I, races. I did that with a Don in Garda last year, yeah. It looked very good. But yeah. this has got stage races, so point to point. We've got orienteering like mixed in with it. And you, if you don't get to those points, you get like a penalty on you your do. time as well. So yeah. really which, good format. Which brings me on actually to something coming up um, in a few weeks time is the Garda Festival, where they do have the second stage of the Bosch EMTB. MTV Challenge, but it's much more than that as well. It's a trade event and there's just hundreds of different brands there. You can test bikes, you can do racing, you can lie on the beach, you can go in the mountains, you can go in the bars, you can eat pizza, you can drink wine. Mm. Oh, it's just great. Sounds you know? amazing. Yeah. Obviously over in Germany, you've got the Dirt Masters Festival kicking off as well. That is a really good event. I've been there a couple of times. It's got everything downhill, cross country, enduro, dirt jump, slope style. You yeah. can literally every corner of that festival meet all your riders. I guess you being the names. master of free ride, what did you do at, at uh, Dirt Masters? Dirt Masters then. I did the dirt jump comp and yeah, they did a slope style event there as well. So yeah. Do you miss that back. kind of thing? No, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to a massive mountain bike event and it's the opening of the Port de Soleil area in, in France, which is just south of Lake Geneva. It attracts thousands of spectators. I think, oh, not spectators, sorry, competitors. Yeah. Last year there was 8,000 mountain bike competitors and it's set to be the biggest ever e-bike category coming up this year. So Good. You get a ticket, you do all the different passes, mm. it's absolutely mega. I've done that a few times myself. But also, it goes to some different towns, and again, there's some there's some expo areas at those towns, so you can test bikes, you can look at bikes, and again, you can drink wine and eat cheese. Chris, sorry, I meant to say, Passport to Soleil is not a race, it's actually a gathering to celebrate the opening of the passes in yes. that area. An amazing event, I've done it three or four times myself, and I highly recommend getting along to that one. But if you want something a little bit more hardcore, just down the road, Leger, I've got the Stop of the Crankworks World Tour, a slope style event, speed and style, lots going on there, big, big names, big events. Yeah, I mean, if you're there, you'd be another big name there. I guess the thing is, maybe I should be going and keeping my head down at Passport de Soleil, mm -hmm. while you, being the hardcore rider, can get yourself along to that slope style Correct. event on uh, an e-bike on an e-bike right mm, don't know about that one but be sure to go along check all those festivals out there and don't forget the wine and the cheese and the beer so you have festivals mm. where there's a gathering of all kinds of bike brands uh, some actually bike brands have their own demo days some of them are at bike festivals some of them are at races so you know companies such as yt industries obviously as you know they've just come out with their decoy e-mountain bike mm. And they have a series of demo events around Europe and on the East Coast and West Coast uh, of North America. So uh, again, a great place to go and test out or ride a series of e-mountain bikes. And Canyon, of course, are doing their world tour with lots of e-bikes available to demo as well. Get along to that, check out the new Neuron on, mm -hmm. Spectral, and of course, all that other range of bikes. Yeah, again, that's worldwide too, right? Mm -hmm. Traveling all over. Yeah. Uh, and finally, you know, don't forget there's some shop demo days such as Leisure Lakes here in the UK, uh, which provide not just one brand, but a range of brands. So, you know, you can t test ride maybe six or seven different e-bikes, different colors, different sizes, different specs, mm. uh, a really a good event to get to. Uh, and moving on to races, Chris. Now, obviously races. we've seen this year the introduction of world level mm. events into the e-bike uh, circuit. So we've got the, World Championships in Mount Sinan coming up later in the year, but then in terms of different countries, Italy seems to be the leader when it comes to e-mountain bike races, the e-enduro series in Italy. Uh, Germany, very powerful uh, network of, 
of e-mountain bike events here in the UK. Loads of e-mountain bike events. Yeah, loads going we haven't actually been to one yet, have we? No, I know. I, I think we should go to the World Champs out in Mount St. Anne. Yeah, absolutely. See you with that World Champs leader's jersey on. Why not? Love to. Uh, and finally, I think uh, we should be looking at things such as challenges mm -hmm. or... Um, uh, or multi-day rides, like last year I went to the Shimano E mountain bike experience, went, which crossed the the Dolomites. And then of course you've got the Bosch EMTB Challenge, which we mentioned earlier, which is a series of events around Europe. Uh, more of a more of a laid back, I mean they're both actually quite yeah. laid back events. Liking the format on those Bosch events, sounds really cool. Could be the future of e-bike yeah. events, I think. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, now only a few weeks ago, I bumped into Franco Monchiero, who is the organizer behind the E Enduro series. Uh, and he give, gives a bit of an insight into his philosophy when it comes to e-mountain bike racing. First question, Franco, is um, why is Italy so ahead of the curve when it comes to e-bike racing? Ma perché secondo me i tempi erano maturi, perché comunque gli italiani hanno un'attitudine alle competizioni e, e quindi secondo me nel 2017 quando abbiamo iniziato era il momento giusto di fare questo. Ok, right. And so Super Enduro was, um, you know, it started with maybe small, small amount of entries, and it's a sport that has become global. Do you think the same will happen with e-bike racing? Beh, speriamo. Uh, sicuramente si sta evolvendo. Quello che noto è che la crescita c'è anno su anno. La gente si deve organizzare, deve comprare le, le e-bike. Uh, però si sta evolvendo, non so se arriveremo mai ai numeri grossi di Super Enduro, però si sta evolvendo sicuro. When we look at e enduro racing, the philosophy is to have one battery during the event, right? What, what, why have you chosen to do that? Eh, perché è molto semplice, perché l'utente EMTB eh, normalmente usa una batteria e le gare devono comunque eh, ricreare la stessa situazione quando non si fa eh, le gare, quindi quello deve essere il, il riferimento, una batteria, saperla gestire, saper gestire le proprie energie. You've got maybe 150 riders, how, how do you have the capacity to, to charge all those batteries during the day? You mentioned about octopus, how does this work? L'Octopus ha una capacità di 100 batterie, quindi a un certo punto quelli che escono dalla zona di ricarica entrano gli altri, quindi è il tempo che serve per questa fase. 100 bikers possono ricaricare. Super Enduro has had different locations in Italy to do with tourism. So how, how important is the geography of, of an area when it comes to an e-enduro event? Questa è una domanda interessante perché secondo me ancora meglio dell'enduro che parte da un punto A e arriva a un punto B ma normalmente si fa in discesa, lì enduro può eh, essere eh, corso in qualsiasi condizione eh, perché una, uno stage potrebbe partire dalla stessa quota di dove c'è l'arrivo, quindi non ha bisogno di altimetrie importanti e può essere fatto ovunque. Wow, nice little insight there from Franco. Not forgetting the WES series kicks off in a couple of days, right? In Monaco? In Monaco, yeah. Mm. What a place for the first ever international e-mountain bike race. Now, it's a four-day event, mm -hmm. uh, and the racing begins on Saturday, and then that's followed by a ride on the Sunday. So it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. There's loads of teams from all over the world taking part in uh, in an area which is absolutely e-bike heaven, or maybe not e-bike heaven, after me, and, after me and Josh went there to do that climb on the Madone. <laughs> that was painful. Chris, how's the Bambino getting on? He's doing good, three months old. I'm dying to get him out there on a wow. bike already. Crikey. Well, saying that, only a few weeks ago, we were at Race Co Cycles, uh, and the guys there had an e-balance bike. So it's just the one. Absolutely. Show me it. Do you want to have a look at that? Yeah. Okay, here it is. Check out the Revy Sender Kids Balance Bike. 10 mile an hour or five mile an hour, five colorways. It's got a rear brake on it. I mean, imagine having one of those if you're between two and six years old. It's got a battery display on it and there's a little throttle there. Check it out. Whoa. How much? 300 quid and you can get them from this Midland distributor, Rich and Race Co Cycles. What's been going on out there on the social, Steve? What have you been seeing? 
social time, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, for me, I noticed that Anne Caroline Chausson has been out on a common sale. Yeah. You know Anne Caroline Chausson? The greatest downhill racer of all time. Mm -hmm. More World Championships, more World Cup wins, more World Cup Series wins than anybody else ever. Really? She she's is amazing. the best mm -hmm. downhill racer of all time. But yeah, she's been having a good time on a re-bike. Of course she is, yeah. yeah. On the free ride scene? Yeah, customer? we've got Jordi Lunn. Uh, he's out there on the new YT decoy. Um, looks really good. Nice uh, table one foot there by Geordie. Isn't he the guy that rode down the tree? Yeah. <laughs> oh nearly lost God, that his, was mental. Uh, nearly lost his undercarriage at the bottom. Really? Yeah, it was that bad. Ooh, can you imagine the speed you'd pick up riding an e-bike down a tree? Down a tree! But what I did notice as well, I saw Adolf Silva. It looks yeah. like Sam Pilgrim's got some catching up to do. This mm. guy's landing a double flip on that YT decoy. Looks amazing. <laughs> Big Mental. Moves. Mental stuff. Any other inspiration out there, Steve? Well, you know how much I like riding in the rain and wet and mud. Uh, oh, I've seen this on Dig BMX this mm. week, uh, shot by Rob Delecki, famous BMX photographer. Mm -hmm. This made me laugh, honestly, I have to say. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. Mud and that as well, nearly going over the bars. Yeah, so I can't perfect. wait. I can't wait to do a bit of bog snorkeling this summer, because no doubt it will be raining in the Northern Hemisphere this year. Tech. Now Chris apparently has got a surprise for me, so I'm just going to block myself off visually and uh, audibly. Well Steve, we know, all know when we're working it, you know when you've got your bike and your e-bike yeah, yeah. stand, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. some maintenance. You have to nudge me when you're ready. I don't know ready. if you know about that, but how heavy is it Chris, sometimes? you have to nudge me when you're ready. How heavy is it sometimes to lift it into Can't the stand? You? Well this guy has come up with the ultimate device. Is he ready, Josh? Check this out. Right, he's not saying anything. You get the idea. Look in his hand. Okay. Drill. He's got a drill, right? He's got yeah. a bike stand. He's got yeah. a very heavy e bike in the background. Well, that's not a heavy e bike. The moustache is pretty light. Well, carry on. What the heck is that? It's got like a worm drive and yeah. a pulley system. Oh, connects what? a drill to and winds the e bike up just on his gun. Look. Are you serious? That is genius. Look, that is genius. No effort. Just wind the drill on. I up mean, the e bike comes. <laughs> Think of all the maintenance you could. Think about the main things you could actually do. Look at it. It's amazing, isn't it? Worm drive, gear, cable. Think of all the maintenance that thing needs to get it keeping it running. So Steve, what are you thinking? Ghetto tech enough for you? It's definitely ghetto tech, mm -hmm. but you know what? It's not my cup of tea. I mean, check this video out which I did on fixing gears out on the trail. A beautiful little U tree branch. Mm -hmm. It does everything it needs to. Plus, we were talking earlier about getting out, out and about. Well, why would you want to be inside doing maintenance? We're heading into the summer season. How, how do you get the bike up in the tree? That's what I want to know. You just lift it, Chris. This week in electrics, we're going to be getting creative. I found a little ledge out here on the street, and I'm going to show you three tricks you can easily do out on the streets on your e-bike. So first up is the favourite. It's a manual. We're going to come in, bump our front wheel off of here, lean back, get the front wheel high, pull it on the handlebars, push with your feet, modulate the rear brake, and hopefully we glide all the way along this ledge on the back wheel. So the rolling side up is a really cool one to have out on the trails. Basically, you need to find a ledge like this. What it is is like a sideways bunny hop. So a similar technique to the bunny hop, come in, pedals level, give the bike a big squash down into suspension, slightly turn your front wheel towards your desired way, and do like hop up, but you twist your hips and lean into it. That way it's gonna generate a bit of sideways force in that bunny hop. It should see you land up on the ledge quite easily. Done your first side hop. Bored of doing regular drop-offs? Well, this one's gonna spice things up a bit. Basically, it's called a stoppy drop or a nolly drop. What it involves is coming in and you do like a stoppy, but you turn and do like a nolly drop. So you're on the front wheel as you do your drop. It's not much use out on the trails, but a load of fun. This is how. So to do the nolly drop, you're gonna need a little bit more speed than you would do for your regular drop-off. You come into it good speed, pedals level, focus on where you wanna leave the wall on the front wheel. As you approach, give the bike a good squash into the suspension and do like a, it's like a regular stoppy. But you're doing your stoppy, so you're modulating your front brake, you've got your weight forward, straight arms, and you're focusing on where you want to come off the wall. As you come to the edge, give the fork a little squash. That should generate a little hop. You need to time that to a little side up off of the wall and you should land your first nolly drop. Okay, it's time for the shop call out. As you can see, Chris has had a change of clothing this week. It's nice to see. Sporting the red, yellow, yeah. and white colours. 
And obviously the olive tea that Steve's got, lots of different teas in there. We've got a trio pack, so you can get all three in one package. Got the puffer jackets, hats, ooh, race jerseys, ooh. lots of cool stuff in the shop. Be sure to a check it out. trio pack? Do you buy pants in a trio pack or do you buy singles? Single pairs. Yeah, do you go for pants or, or boxers? Nick knickers. Knickers. Crikey. We haven't got any e mountain bike knickers yet, but uh, I'm sure if you guys uh, suggest it, we can maybe get them on the channel. So we had a load of comments from a show a while back that we did on concept e-bikes. It wasn't a while back, it was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, is that all it nevertheless, was? Nevertheless, nevertheless. This is in from Jamie Gibbon, uh, who likes the whole discussion about feature of e-bikes and some of the features. Uh, what uh, Jamie would like to see is greater battery range, 750 to 1000 watt hours, target for most e-bikes, while not increasing the overall bike weight significantly. Mm -hmm. Looking for weight reductions elsewhere, perhaps. Number two, integrated gearbox and motor, improving the rear suspension design as a byproduct, like, like you're it, thinking, like Jamie. It. Number three, an aesthetic for e-mountain bikes that really does work, perhaps battery motor gearbox in one low down well packaged unit. It's nice to see Jamie putting a bit of thought into this. Yeah, yeah definitely. Good uh, number four, solid motor. Yeah, all agree with you on that. Number mm -hmm. five, improved software for traction control. And six, better GPS camera capability. Traction control would be a good one. Interesting. And pro target. Eddie was the world's strongest man in 2017 due to injury, didn't compete in 2018. So you might be thinking, what earth is Chris talking about? Well, we had the ex former. Uh, world's strongest man on the show, and we I thought it was mistake Bowser or we Mario. mistakenly put him down as the current mm -hmm. world's strongest man, which he's not. And your lakes feature, Steve, had some comments on that as well. You didn't actually say who the current world champion is. It's oh great, this is a lovely pronunciation. <laughs> Half Bjorn Julius Bjornsson. Yeah, nice one, Bjornsson. Right, moving on to our lakes five thousand uh, dead five thousand for dead feature, yeah, which is feature. Adam Brayton. Oh, thanks. When are we going on one? We need to do one of those yeah. big days out. I'm sure somewhere in Wales you can take me. I've got it all lined up. Graham Clift, specialised Kinevo expert, 504 watt hours, 26 miles, 4,300 foot of climbing, and finished with 23% of battery. So 5,000 feet is easily achie achievable. Uh, Graham rode in a mix of Eco and Trail, and uh, he was riding the Raven and Gorlech Trail at Brachva Forest. Where's that? West Wales. Yeah. Oh, Chris has just shown me this video for Where in the World section of the EMBN show. I haven't got time to bring the globe up because this is next level. It's, it's from Pa uh, and he's moved up to the Pyrenees. He's in a village called Berger. 1,000 to 2,000 meter descents. Chris, this is absolute e-bike gold. This yes. is the tip total kind of it's thing. Amazing. We want to see you guys send it into the channel daily. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. This is absolutely Nine amazing. Nine out of ten locals are on e-bikes as well. Whoa. It's a big, big e-bike scene going on over there. It looks yeah. amazing. Honestly, Pa, thanks so much for sending this video and it's absolutely top level stuff. Thanks so, so much. Right, what is coming up on the EMBN channel this week? Well, on Friday, Steve, we've got common drop-off mistakes and how to rectify them. Yeah, common drop-off mistakes. Uh, pretty biggest one is actually to do them in the first place, wouldn't you say? Maybe, uh, if it's your case. And coming up on Sunday, we've got uh, entry-level e-bikes from £500 up to £1,700. What to choose, how to choose it, and what they can do. Now it's time for my favourite part of the show, it's the Bike Vault, Steve. You ready? Let's get in. So Lee sent us in his high bike x Jura all mountain. He's out in Baggeridge Country Park in Staffordshire. Solo expedition. Mm -hmm. I'm all up for them. I like going up for myself. Got a moody it's background a as well. Sky. It's a little bit, exposure's a bit weird. I think it's a nice. It's nice, isn't it? Craig on his 2019 Specialised Levo. Perthshire. Yeah, Scotland playing out in the snow. Mm. Uh, a few mates covered in the snow covered hills. Of uh, I think it's a nice Chris because I'm looking forward to the summer now. Maybe send it in at the end of the summer. How about Ooh. this for summer then, Steve? This is from Lewis on his Canyon Spectral on. In Saragossa. Yeah, looking yeah. good. Yeah, I do like that a lot actually. I do like a lot, a, a lot. Bit. Yeah, nice bit of gorse. Any gorse down in summer? That's Somerset? not gorse, that's Al Ali Aliga. Aliaga. Where did you say that? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Get your glasses on. Look. The the Aliga blooms, Aliaga blooms. Well, it might be the same as gorse, but just a Spanish. Come is on, it the don't same go as, Russian. Is it the same? It's as a gorse? super nice. Uh, is it the same as gorse? Or is it? Oh, of course it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, moving on to uh, Tivoliva in Bulgaria and the Rila Mountain. It's amazing, isn't that it? Rila or Rila? Rila. Rila? Yeah. That is spectacular. Look at the colour in the of the uh, lower it? part of those larch trees. Super nice. Are they larches? Is it larch? Is it gorse? Of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> Super nice anyway. Super nice. Uh, Scott uh, Hardy sent in a picture of his Scott E Genius 2018. Lucerne, Switzerland. Lucerne, Switzerland. Really great bike. Swap the forks out for a Fox 36 as well. So, I recognise that place actually. Mm. I want it, that. I want that bike to be on top of the mountain, not at the base of it. Mm. Unless you've been to the top of the mountain. For me, sunset as well. It's beautiful. It's bordering on bordering on. It's nice. Oh, come Neil, on. Schoolboy, schoolboy era. What's, what's the chair? Can't see. I mean, I like the frames of the trees, yeah. oak trees. Is this in Wales? Devil's, Devil's Punchbowl Punch Ball. and Surrey Hills. Yeah, yeah but 1990 climbed before the Leo, so he's, he's upgraded a bit. He's gone in a bit of a time machine towards that bike, I feel. So what are you thinking? Nice. Just a nice. Yeah. It's a good time. Barry. KTM Machina, yeah. Lysan 271, with mega chain stays. What? Two, two battery, 96k day out. <laughs> Big, big ride. You've got to give him a super nice one. This is my back uh, back garden as well, so he's lucky to live there. Amazing, isn't it? Barry, you've got to give it a super it's nice Super, that. super nice. Definitely. Super nice. Super, super, super nice. Dan on his high bike exterior out in Cranham, Gloucestershire, exploring Cranham with a friend. Had some yeah. awesome downhill Near lines. Near Stroud. Do you, remember, lines. Do, you remember the, uh, do you remember the trails in Cranham? Yeah, I've ridden there a few times, actually. You've it's done awesome. everything, haven't you? Oh, yeah, I've had a look. That's yeah. the end of the bike. Oh, uh, bike no. Love seeing all your bikes. Be sure to get yours into EMBM by using the upload service. Details are on screen now. Check it out. That's it for this week's show. Let's know where you're going to in terms of festivals, events, and races this summer because we'll be somewhere. We'll be at Sea Otter probably as you're watching this video. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget you can subscribe to EMBN uh, and give us a thumbs up, let us know your comments. But Chris, coming yeah. up. If you want to stick around, be sure to check out the Canyon Neuron On versus the Spectral On as well. Really cool video. 130 we versus 150. Mm -hmm. Up high in Snowden, check it out.